Welcome again friends. We are talking about uh, blottings and uh, in this video we will be talking about the western blotting. Now uh, southern blotting is applied for the detection of DNA, northern blotting is utilized for the detection of RNA and western blotting is utilized for the detection of proteins. This is also called immunoblotting because in this case we will be seeing that uh, antigen and antibody interaction can be utilized beautifully uh, to get our results. Now what are the application and advantages? Now the applications for this blotting is that uh, verify the expression of a protein inside the cell we can get it. Second thing is that we can determine the relative amount of a protein present in different samples. So if we get different samples from the different time limit of a pro different time gap uh, from the same cell we can get the protein expression or amount of protein expression present in different time from, from the cell. And also we can analyze the protein protein interaction so it's a very very useful tool or useful uh, technique to analyze the protein protein interaction now the advantages of this western blot technique which is uh, designated as wb here it is highly sensitive technique the presence of protein we can detect using utilizing the sds page or sodium dodecyl sulfate uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis technique now in that technique we can utilize uh, we can also segregate or separate proteins according to the uh, according to their mass uh, according to their mass we can separate the proteins by by turning this all of their charge into a negative charge utilizing sodium dodecyl sulfate or SDS but after staining that SDS uh, bands with silver staining procedure we get uh, the protein percentage approximately 10 nanogram of protein. We can detect up to 10 nanogram of protein utilizing the silver staining procedure but in using this uh, western blot analysis we can actually detect as low as 1 to 5 nanogram of average protein uh, uh, range. Okay, So this is pretty uh, sensitive detection. So this animation or uh, this whole video uh, or all this presentation is by Dr. Azhar Christie. Most of the slides are by Dr. Azhar Christie. So uh, credit goes to him. Okay. So western blotting step through. Uh, the main steps of the western blotting are as follows. First is the blocking. Now all of the steps that we will be studying here in the western blotting step through is only after the running the gel. Now before, uh, remember I have told you before that in any kind of blotting, the blotting is not a self-sufficient process. We need to run a gel before blotting. And that is the preliminary step about all the type of blotting. So that, that's why the blottings are so much time consuming. And Western blotting is the most time consuming above all. It will take almost 4 to 5 days to get your complete result of your blot. It anyhow, right? So it's a pretty uh, long time consuming protocol. Okay. So first thing is as follows like blocking. Blocking means uh, to block to reduce the background noise ratio. Uh, second is a probing with specific antibodies. Now in this case we can probe it with antibodies. That's why remember we have told you that uh, it is also called the immunoblotting because instead of the radio level uh, probe we utilize uh, this kind of antigen antibody interaction and substrate enzyme interactions in this case. Then after probing wash to uh, remove the excess probes which are unbound then the detection process, then washing again, then the x-ray uh, for the gel documentation system we get the pictures. Now this is the overview. So this uh, say this is the cell in the cell culture. Now we need to take out the cell and from the cell we will get our desired uh, DNA and we get the desired protein not DNA in this case. We get the cell we get our desired protein. Okay. So this is the human cell containing proteins. We lyse the cells by detergents and sonications and we get our proteins. These are the native proteins. They are folded properly. They are not uh, not native actually. They are folded. Now we provide the SDS or LDS whatever to to open up these proteins because SDS is a detergent. It is having a lot of negatively charged residue which will open up this uh, closely uh, what we can say folded protein into an unfolded form. Now detergents will bind to make it unfolded and also we can do it using the heat denaturation of the proteins and we get the denatured, denatured part of the protein okay so heat denaturation is done and then we get our linearized proteins now what we'll do we'll take this linearized protein and load them onto the gel which is called the SDS page or sodium dodecyl sulfate uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis okay and we get the uh, electric current and this is a negative charge this is a positively charged region so from the so the protein will move 
from the negative charge region to the positively charged region because the proteins now are negatively charged due to the activity of SDS and then the protein will start to migrate the shorter proteins will migrate faster larger proteins will migrate uh, slower so we get this kind of gradient okay then after running the gel we get a blo uh, we get the gel now we need to transfer the gel onto some filter paper now this particular step is called the blotting right so for this step from now on the blotting is uh, beginning uh, now we get this filter paper this can be uh, nitrocellulose Th this can be uh, or, or this can also be ni ni uh, what you can say nylon paper nowadays nylon is pretty famous but in this case most of the case nitrocellulose or PVDF membrane are used mostly PVDF membranes are used okay because they are having better affinity towards the proteins then uh, we have a transfer of our uh, protein onto our uh, onto our membrane so this is the PVDF membrane and onto this PVDF membrane we have transferred our protein successfully into the same regions where previously in the gel proteins are placed now need to we now we need to block the membrane with non specific proteins why this blocking is important otherwise when we add the probe then what will happen the probe will haphazardly bind with any region of this membrane and as a result of this probe binding to the membrane, uh, uh, the membrane will show wrong results. Membrane will indicate the presence of protein in the wrong regions where uh, actually no pro proteins are there. For example, if we don't uh, uh, make a probe, uh, we, we don't make a block, then the probe can may bind here, here, here. It can mostly bound with this region, this region, but also this can bind with this region and this region. So after developing, we can show it can show us that there are five, six, seven bands, but actually there are two uh, protein of our interest are there. So for eliminating this effect, we must cover the rest of the regions with unwanted protein, which will never bind with our probe, right? So we'll attach this protein. So you can see this uh, triangle. These green triangles are our non-specific proteins, which will bind to the rest of the unbound regions of the membrane, so that our product, so that our probe uh, is not able to bound with that region and cannot show us a wrong result. Now we'll add the uh, antibody, which is called the primary antibody or first degree antibody. Now this antibody will go and attach to our desired location. The desired location means the proteins here uh, attached with this negatively charged SDS. And we'll add this probe, it will go and bind with it. Now first of all, this for primary antibody is a rabbit antibody here in this case. It's a rabbit anti-human beta acting antibody. And the proteins we are talking about is a beta acting because we know the beta actin is present in all the most of the cells. So it's a anti-human beta acting. So it will go and attach with the beta acting and anti beta acting so it will go and bind with the beta actin regions okay so after that this uh, go and bind with this proteins okay so it will bind with our protein of our interest and you can see this antibody is never bound with this uh, rest of the non specific proteins because these proteins are not uh, uh, eager to bind with this antibody right after that what we need to do we need to add secondary antibody now the secondary antibody is a HRP or horse radish peroxidase con conjugate secondary antibody now these are modified antibody these are conjugate of antibody these are not simple antibodies now you have seen this is the primary antibody and this is a, a simple antibody without anything but now the secondary antibody is attached to a enzyme it is called the horse radish peroxidase or HRP and the antibody is called HRP conjugated antibody and this antibody is bound uh, with this HRP with its FC receptor region and what will happen once it will go and attach to the FC region of and these antibodies are anti rabbit antibodies remember in the previous case uh, sorry in the previous case we provide the rabbit antibody now we provide the anti rabbit antibody that means the secondary antibody are destined to attach with this primary antibodies and where will uh, they attach they attach with the fc region of the primary antibody that means this fc region so these are the fc region so these are the fc region and they will attach to this fc region and we will see here yes now this uh, horse studies peroxidase conjugated secondary antibodies are anti rabbit antibody they, this is uh, made from the goat so it is a goat anti rabbit hrp conjugate antibody so they will go and bound with the fc region of the primary antibody
so here we can see they will go and bind with the FC re receptor region after that why we add this uh, horse radish per peroxidase conjugate because this horse radish peroxidase is an enzyme it can cleave luminol luminol is a substrate for that so we must provide luminol after adding the secondary antibody now after adding each of these antibodies we have sequential washing steps because we need to remove the unbound antibodies and after each of these steps when we remove unbound antibodies is done we add the substrate for the HRP conjugate which is the luminol now once HRP will act on luminol it will cleave it and it will provide light and this light can be detected by film okay so so we must have added this luminol after this process so that's how we get the result now let's see the advantages and disadvantages of this process it is quick methodology because of only antibody is used now direct antibody uh, application is given I'm not going to talk about that uh, actually uh, as we've seen in this case we utilize two different antibodies primary antibody and secondary antibody for the activity now in some case of Western blotting uh, there is only one step antibody activity we just provide a primary antibody and that primary antibody will uh, show us the presence of the protein this is called the first direct uh, or the direct uh, uh, the direct western blotting there are some advantages and disadvantages of the direct western blotting direct western blotting uh, can be achieved pretty fast because it is only one antibody attachment step it is cross reactivity of secondary antibody is determined and also sensitivity is increased because each primary antibody contains several epitopes and also a wide variety of levels secondary antibodies are available commercially because many primary antibodies can be made in one species and the same uh, level secondary antibody can be used in detection so these are the advantages and the disadvantages are the immunoreactivity of the primary anti uh, antibody can be increased and also there is no flexibility in the choice of primary antibody level from the experiment to another because these primary antibodies are pretty much specific in all these cases right these are sorry these primary antibodies are pretty much specific in all these cases so we cannot have much more variations or flexibility in varying in the choice of primary antibody now let us look at the step by step process of uh, western blotting techniques we have seen it earlier but now let's see it again uh, again uh, this is from dr azhar christi this is a very good uh, assembly of all these things step one is the SDS page so we need to run the SDS page uh, where we uh, denature our protein with SDS and uh, negatively charge make them uh, negatively charged and then we will run the gel and the protein will migrate and after the protein migration we get the gel and we will transfer the uh, this proteins from the gel onto our blot the PVDF membrane or nitrocellulose can be used then after getting the uh, blot we first have a block why block as I've told you before uh, to increase the sensitivity and to prevent the non-specific signal coming from the rest of the background of the PVDF membrane so for that we need to block uh, the regions with other type of non-specific proteins which are non-specific uh, to the antibody which are non-specific to the primary antibody that we will provide after that primary and secondary antibody detection will be there so we will provide the monoclonal antibody which are very very specific that's why we provide monoclonal if we provide polyclonal antibody they will vary they can bind with many different uh, proteins but monoclonal antibodies can bind only one or two different uh, only one type of uh, uh, segments so they will bind with it then we will add as the secondary uh, probe secondary antibody as the probe which will attach with some kind of enzyme we, and will provide the substrate for the enzyme and uh, when the enzyme act onto the substrate it must generate something some color or something which can be detected so that we can detect it and uh, it can give us a clear understanding of the presence of the protein onto the membrane usually uh, enzyme HRP or horse radius peroxidase is utilized and we provide the substrate luminol it will convert the luminol and provide the light okay so here is the reaction so this is the luminol as a substrate and we also provide the hydrogen peroxide which is important for the reaction horse radius peroxidase will cleave this uh, ANH NH linkage from here and then it will provide anti generate light which can be measured at 425 nanometer range okay this is a clear understanding of how the primary and secondary antibodies are interacting with each other so say this is the membrane and onto the membrane we are having the target protein here this is the target protein 
and onto the target protein directly uh, the primary antibody will attach to it via the FAB portion and secondly the secondary antibody which is the anti-primary antibody will bind with the primary antibody via the FC region so here it is the FC region of primary antibody onto which the secondary antibody will attach now the secondary antibody is not a simple one this is a conjugate with uh, an enzyme uh, the enzyme could be HRP and also the, it can be other type of enzymes or other type of molecules which will uh, degrade a substrate and provide something which can be detectable now here in this case uh, this is a fluorescence uh, molecule so we provide the substrate and the enzyme will cleave it and provides a fluorescence molecule now the fluorescence product can be uh, measured in 550 to 570 nanometer range colorimetrically and we can provide we can get the understanding of the protein deposit onto the film by looking at the fluorescence that is coming from that particular region of the film and here is a last step again uh, exposure of this to the extra uh, to the extra film and we get the autoradiogram in any kind of case uh, any kind of uh, luminescence uh, fluorescence whatever we get this kind of autoradiogram uh, once we use it in the x-ray uh, once we plate it in the extra film and we get this and this extra film can be stored and by analyzing the extra film we can tell uh, the presence of our desired proteins now the applications and the importance uh, the quantification of a specific protein uh, can be achieved by densitometric analysis here and also integrating the uh, areas under the peaks okay and also several gel documentation systems are there and commercially available which can be useful for uh, results from gel, uh, analysis of the results from the gel or membranes okay some drawbacks of the western blotting yes many steps were errors and can so as we are increasing the steps for a procedure it will encounter for much more it will encounter much more errors right so we are increasing the errors as we are increasing the steps as it is done in multiple steps the error or the chance of error is more and large amount of samples are needed say 5 to 50 microgram of samples are needed for the proper and good detection accurate quanti uh, quantitation is very very difficult uh, due to many kind of several small steps analysis so any mistake in small step will result in the uh, whole fault result in the spoilage of the experiment and it's obviously a time consuming protocol uh, needs 4 to 5 days to get a result and most of the time the results are uh, not coming in most of the cases right and i'm not going to talk about the fast far western technique we'll be talking about it later so that's it i hope it will help you thank you